When was the last time you visited the woodland in autumn? Perhaps you've considered picking some mushrooms for eating, but you're a wee bit scared to do that, and you'd be wise to. The best way to choose mushrooms for eating is to go along with an expert, to go on one of your local foraging courses. That's not what I'm doing though. I'm here in my local woodland because I'm having a relationship with these fungi. And that relationship for me is best worked out in the pages of my art journal. It seems a wee bit bizarre, but I'm taking only a few of these wee creatures. And I'm going to make some art with them. I'm going to make spore prints and see what they have to tell me. I'm not about making amazing art for my walls. I'm really more about having a relationship with the world around me and figuring out how to be human in these times. And these times are challenging for all of us. What I understand about fungi is that some of them reproduce through the release of spores and you can make spore prints. It helps you identify what mushrooms you're working with and other things you can do is to make art on your pages and that's what I'm doing here. With just a few, I'm lucky enough to be able to walk to some ancient woodlands I live near to and I wanted to experiment. I didn't know which mushrooms would leave a good spore print and this is what it looks like when you're experimenting, when you're in relationship, when you're learning about the world around you. The next day I discover that I've left these mushrooms on a wee bit overly long for a good print. And this was before I learned that that particular mushroom there produces ink. It was long used by people in the past to make ink. Engaging with the world around you is a project in itself. We're so often, you know, looking down at these wee devices that hold our whole world in them. But the reality is that our whole world is around us. And it can be shocking to realise that when we know so little about what is living just five minutes away from us. So that's partly what I do when I'm working in a journal. Relating in this way teaches me a lot about the world around me. It teaches me about how best to interact with the world around me. I have been making ink from these guys for a couple of years now, ever since I made this amazing discovery. The discovery was made not through looking at my device, though. It was made through going out and engaging in the world. It's a wee bit like creating a nature table, but I'm recording the results directly into my journal. At this time of year, I find that my creative practice increases in terms of me actually making work in my art journal. And I think that's partly because I'm spending less time outdoors, just because it's, uh, you know, a shorter amount of daylight. But there's also something about this approach to winter that asks us to come inside a wee bit more, to come internally a wee bit more. And my internal work can never be disengaged from my outside world. 
and this relationship that I have with the outside world and everything that inhabits it that isn't human and is human and how we relate that's something that I can play with and work with and get to understand a wee bit more when I'm making these pages in my so-called art journal. It might not look like art to you, but art doesn't mean something pretty on somebody's wall or something like a portrait. It can be a process that we use to figure out who we are and how we are walking and engaging. May you be inspired to go out and engage with the world around you and then see how it unfolds in your art journal. <laughs>